Today or tonight in Hong Kong time, I'm really happy to be joined by Mo Ming. Mo Ming is the author of a book that Line of Intent has released a few months ago. It's called Revealing the Secrets of Taoist Inner Alchemy and Tai Chi Chuan, the Lineage Teachings of Liu Hengjie and Bai Hua. So Mo Ming is a lineage practitioner in the line of uh, Bai Hua. And Bai Hua, we're going to hear about who exactly Bai Hua was, a very uh, key figure in internal martial arts in Hong Kong for, for a few different reasons. But uh, he's most famously been written about by a popular American writer, a martial arts Qigong writer who describes um, meeting him and then subsequently meeting their both teacher, who is Liu Hongjie. And Liu Hongjie uh, lived in Beijing for most of his later life and was a Bagua Xingyi practitioner and a Taoist uh, adept or master. So there are many different uh, subjects I'd like to cover with uh, Mo Ming. And Mo Ming, the author, by the way, has been a, uh, a really staunch, courageous fighter for freedom in Hong Kong. Now, everybody watching this will know what went down in Hong Kong uh, since the Umbrella Revolution and over the last several years. Uh, it's turned now into pretty much a dictatorship along the lines of the mainland and Mo Ming and obviously many of his allies and friends fought uh, many pitch battles. He was on the front line um, actually there when all the heavy oppression was going on. So we're going to talk about this subject as well as um, martial arts and Taoism practice practice cultivation in general. So Mo Ming, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us on a candlelit Hong Kong night. Um, yes. Uh, it's, it's quite, hopefully quite meaningful that our, our Buddhas are communicating across the, across these thousands of miles. So oh, we yeah. can have a heart to heart conversation. Um, yeah. So yes. let's start by, um, please just introduce yourself briefly, how you became involved in martial arts. How old was you when you, and uh, who was your first teacher? Ah, it's a very long story. I started my training at, at, at nine, uh, nine years old. I started uh, in Taekwondo. And uh, we can fast forward to <laughs> um, 19 years old, 10 years later. And uh, I was looking for something deeper because um, I thought I wouldn't go too I wouldn't go too far in Taekwondo because uh, I'm I'm not physically very fit and strong and not not very fast either. So I don't feel I can achieve much much in Taekwondo. So um, when I went to university in UK, um, I met my teacher in Yashikan Aikido. Uh, that's Sensei Yates. Sensei Yates is the head of UK and Bulgaria at the time. Well, he, he, he still is. And um, he's, he's truly an eye opener. He um, is, how would say it? You still here? I'm still here. I'm here, yes. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Uh, He's a very traditional Japanese martial artist, and um, I'm very keen in uh, learning under him. And uh, when I went back to Hong Kong for my um, holidays, uh, I was looking to practice some Japanese martial art as well. So uh, I see there are many teachers in, in Hong Kong, but um, I'm not very satisfied, I must say. I'm not very satisfied uh, with their levels. Um, until one day I met my, 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 my teacher, Mr. Young. Mr. Young was teaching uh, Kurindo Aikido in Hong Kong at that moment. Kurindo Aikido is a, um, a, 
you can say a minor branch of Aikido, which is not very popular. I'm sure you would, you probably wouldn't have heard of it in in UK. Um, yes. Uh, Mr. Young was uh, seventh dan at that moment. He was very proficient in that art. Um, <clears throat> the the reason I started to learn from uh, Mr. Young was uh, on the first day we met. He well, I, I I've actually written that in my in my in my book. Um, he asked me to demonstrate how to perform a, a straight cut. A straight sword cut uh, correctly, and he he asked me to put a guard and uh, holding a holding a, a real a real size uh, katana, um, a wooden katana of course, it's called a boken, and uh, he was going to strike me with a with a tanto, uh, a short sword, and uh, I was nineteen years old at that time. I thought, no, you're not. You're not going to, to, to achieve anything. I was taller than him, was stronger than him. Uh, what, 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 what was that old man thinking? Uh, surprisingly, he just struck right through my gut and the volcano nearly hit my head and I completely collapsed. But at the moment, I was very surprised. And I, I also thought, well, that's, that's, that's not Aikido, right? That's not something. Japanese would do, right? Mm, <laughs> do yeah. There's just something else. So um, that's how I started learning from uh, Mr. Young. And um, <clears throat> we spent the next few, 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 few years uh, learning Korean Aikido. Uh, I quite like this art. It's, uh, it's got some deep, deep knowledge, um, very practical, especially the weapon. Um, but uh, to be honest, that wasn't quite what I was seeking from Mr. Young. Um, I knew he was uh, learning from a, a, a Chinese teacher called um, Mr. Bai Hua, and uh, I, I knew that's, that's really where the power, where his power comes from. Um, First, how did you how did you know this? Did he tell stories about Bai Hua or how did that, you know that he was studying? He will occasionally man it, mention it because uh, <coughs> after, dinner, after training, he would occasionally mention uh, his uh, studying under a guy called uh, Bai Hua and uh, Bai Hua is really not, not famous in Hong Kong at all. Uh, I, I hadn't heard of him uh, at that time. Well, in fact, very few people know, 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 know Bai Hua in Hong Kong, surprisingly, right? And uh, <clears throat> so at the beginning, he, he, he only taught us some very uh, basic uh, power training of uh, Bai Hua's art to aid our structure in uh, Aikido. So we just blindly push against each other, really, for, for a couple of years without really knowing how to do it properly. But uh, at least our, our, our structure was uh, strengthening uh, through this practice. So uh, one day Mr. Young said, uh, told, told, told us that uh, he's going to retire from uh, teaching Aikido. And uh, anyone like to study something deeper uh, could uh, start learning uh, Tai Chi from him. And he would start a small uh, study group. Um, so that's how I started to learn uh, Tai Chi and uh, the Neigong of uh, Mr. Bai Hua. I see, very interesting. And so the whole Aikido class just transformed into a Tai Chi class at that point? No, only a few, <laughs> only a few. Very dedicated ones, the, oh. the ones who are too foolish, foolish to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so just just about Aikido, we all know about Wishiba Osensei was meant to be this spiritual Superman, right, with in, incredible powers, martial powers, enlightenment. Uh, what do you think has happened to Aikido 
from what you've seen, you've, I'm, I'm sure you've researched many branches of Aikido. Do you think it was just him? Um, he was a one-off genius person and he couldn't really, didn't have the tech, didn't have the way of teaching the Neigong that he had? Um, or what, you know, what happened to Aikido? Well, I've practiced two two styles of Aikido. Um, one is Yoshinkan Aikido. Um, Yoshinkan Aikido is derived uh, is, is is passed down by um, Goso uh, Sensei Goso Sioda. Uh, Goso Sioda um, was was a student of uh, Ushiba, and um, later on he just has, uh, established his, his his own school, which was quite successful. Uh, well, in fact, um, the the riot police of Japan. Uh, employed Yoshinkan to, to to train them, and uh, I've met a few of them in in, in France one time. Um, they they were pretty good, good, good structure, good technique, and uh, <clears throat> good good fighter in general. And um, that Yoshinkan is more in line with teaching of uh, Ushiba. The Korinda Aikido I was talking about uh, was taught by. Uh, another sensei, who I can't remember the pronunciation of his Japanese name, because uh, I normally just pronounce his name in, in, in Cantonese, but uh, never mind. Um, but he actually studied together with Ushiba. They co-found the art Aikido. In fact, at the beginning, Ushiba suggested to, to, to call this new art Aiki Fujitsu, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the founder of Corinda Aikido said, well, it's, it's, it's transformed, it's transcended to, to another level of just pure martial art. It's, it's the way. So why don't we call it Aikido? Mm. And um, the dojo of this guy is called Corindo. Polindo is a well, is a very uh, Buddhism con uh, concept. Uh, well, I can talk about the concept for, for a very long time, but uh, let's not digress. Uh, that's that's why he named his style Polindo Aikido, and uh, Polindo Aikido works on slightly different uh, concepts than uh, Ushiba's um, Aikido because. Uh, they, they they come from different backgrounds. Mm. Uh, go back to your question. Uh, do I think Ushiba is a one of genius? Uh, I think he is certainly a very good fighter, and uh, he must have gone through some very tough battle, um, especially uh, on his trip in in China and Mongolia. Uh, there's also reports that he might have practiced uh, Ba Gua Jiang. That's why his um, his movement has changed um, after he came back from China. Uh, you can see it's more circular in nature. And uh, but do I think that's that's Chinese internal exercise? No, because. Uh, Spinning around is not a form of internal exercise. It's, you can say it's a kind of basic exercise that builds up um, structure, mm. balance, and a bit of strength. But um, would I categorize as internal? No, I won't. Because, uh, well, let's face it, many, many, many arts will spin around as well, like, like ballet. Mm -hmm. So can 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 you really categorize ballet as an uh, internal exercise? No, you can't. Right. And so, uh, hmm. seem to have merged some of his uh, experience or or the arts he learned in China uh, into the more um, traditional Japanese uh, jujitsu he learns in, in 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 Japan, and uh, that included uh, Daito Liu Aki Jujutsu and. Uh, What's the other thing? What's it like for? Maybe sword yeah. practice, right? Some kind of sword yeah. practice. Sword, sword practice. Because uh, one one thing you got one thing you got to know is um, traditional samurai. They 
they, they were actually swordsmen more than uh, uh, more than how how to phrase it? Empty hand fighters. Yeah, more more than hand to hand. Mm. Uh, they, they they really focus on the sword art a lot more than bare hand techniques. I see. Yes. So when you yeah. when you when you started to study the Tai Chi Chuan with your teacher, was yeah. it a big difference? I mean, was it immediately clear that this was this thing you were learning now was where the his power was coming from rather than Aikido? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Traditional Japanese martial arts, they focus a lot on uh, dropping the weight. They focus a lot on um, the intention of charging forward, attacking forward. They focus a lot on uh, mind training, but um, they don't really practice the Chinese concept of uh, Nei Gong. Uh, hence, the, the, well, actually, the, the, the movement, I would say, lacks acceleration because they don't have the Nei Gong. And uh, where does this acceleration come from? Um, I would say it's really a kind of uh, intra-abdominal pressure. Um, it's this pressure that uh, that provides acceleration, and the uh, Japanese martial arts in general is lacking that. They don't really concept of using intra abdominal pressure. They talk about using chi. Uh, they, they 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 call it key. They mm. talk about dan, but um, they they call it hala. Mm. What they focus more is, uh, I would say, is body alignment and uh, mind training. Um, but uh, Mr. Yang's, Mr. Yang's Aikido movement is different than others because there's acceleration in his movements. He doesn't just drop his weight. He doesn't just rest his weight on his uke. Like his, um, how do you translate it? His his opponent, his training partner. You could feel it. Mm. He would, if you try to resist his technique, he would, he would actually throw it back to you. Mm. And, that, and 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 that's not that. And that's that's not Japanese martial arts. The Japanese martial arts don't 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 really do that. If the traditional in, in traditional Japanese martial arts, when they meet resistance. They will transform to another technique. <coughs> yeah. Uh, hence, hence, if you study the, the the fulcrum of the technique, it's very different than internal martial arts. The fulcrum of Japanese martial arts is often outside the body. Hmm. Hence, they need to use um, special stepping method. They need to use special tripping methods, or maybe um, joint locking techniques. Mm -hmm. They aren't really using the center of gravity as the fulcrum. But um, internal martial arts, the Chinese internal martial arts is is different, and um, I would say this is the the the, the major difference between um, Mr. Yang and and his fellow classmates, and and even his Japanese teacher. Um, I would say his his Japanese teacher, uh, Sensei Sono. Sensei Sono is exceptional swordsman. Immaculate sense of timing and distance. There's no way you're going to cut him. He'll always cut you first. Hmm. But um, he he. The thing is, he 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 doesn't accelerate in the way Mr. Yang accelerates. I see. Because Yang practices Tai Chi and they go. I see. To bring it back to your book, Mo Ming, uh, so the title, 
You know, this is why I was really excited and agreed to publish the book because you really put things in this book. I haven't, I've read hundreds, if not more books about internal martial arts, especially Tai Chi Chuan is very popular with readers. So this is revealing the secrets of Taoist inner alchemy and Tai Chi Chuan. And you give very specific uh, details of the inner content of Tai Chi Chuan, not just philosophy, not just um, abstract, you know, chi floating around the body, but you treat it almost like an engineering uh, professor or, 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 or a technical uh, builder, right? The way that you explain it. So for the, for the listeners who haven't yet read your book, could you explain just one aspect of Tai Chi Chuan that you put in the book that generally isn't taught? Something simple, but that will illustrate what we're talking about. I, I I know many um, Tai Chi popes. Uh, they, they they like to discuss chi and the chi flowing around the body. Like if you're soft, and then the chi will flow. <laughs> well, well, honestly, uh, it doesn't work this way. That there's no power in softness. And uh, but but what is chi? That's uh. That's a very important concept in in, in Tai Chi Chuan. Where is mm. Qi? And um, I think in order to understand what is Qi, we first need to understand what is Yin and what is Yang. Because that's an essential concept in uh, in Mr. Bai's system. In in fact, that's the that's the first question he he asked he asked me when we first met. And that's also the first question he asked Mr. Yang when when, when they first met. Mm. And what is Yang? Um, yin and Yang is uh, <clears throat> they are they're related to each other. Yin is the God and Yang is the functioning. So Qi, if you Define it as a kind of energy that um, projects outward. Then it's yang. But without yin as the source, then yang is uh, the, the the extension of yang is is empty within. It's just brute force, or uh, or even worse, it's just very soft brute force. Mm. So where does the yin come from? Yin is it's actually also a kind of force. It's a force that's retrieving <coughs> inwards and downwards. Um, <clears throat> it's a force that's, re that's retrieved by Dan Tian. Uh, Dan Tian, like I discussed in my book, you can say is a is your center of gravity. It's your center of gravity is the center point of your body. So as you suck in this center point back to your minimum acupuncture point, that's uh, right between your kidney, and tuck in both sides of your waist, you start to create pressure in your, in your abdomen. That I would define as, uh, as the initiation of the yin, of the yin power. You got to have this as the basis of the yang extension. Without this, all, all the extension is just anti movement. Mm. I was the fundamental, fundamental points of uh, Tai Chi Chuan. You can think of it as a fulcrum, and your limbs are the power stroke. You can think of it as, as this way. Mm. Without the fulcrum, all the power stroke is uh, is rootness. So um, if you ask for this one point, then yeah, this is the this is the one point I would say is 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 the fundamental. Yeah, I, I mean, in the book, you you explain these things with with great detail and clarity. It's 
it's almost like you consciously wanted to uh, take things that were secret before or obscured by maybe translation problems or even within the Chinese speaking community and you wanted to make them as crystal clear as possible. Um, they are really super clear and then you expand upon Pang Luji and many aspects of, of Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, it's a brilliant book, so I highly recommend anyone who practices internal martial arts, even Aikido, I think would, would benefit greatly from this. And of course, the, this particular teaching was passed down from, from your teacher in Hong Kong uh, and then to him from Bai Hua, but you also met Bai Hua several times. Can yeah, you yeah. Tell, tell the people listening just something of your memory of Bai Hua? He's obviously become quite famous in internal martial arts circles because of the writings of an American teacher. Um, yes. So what do you remember about him? You know, his, what was his quality when you met him? I must say that um, he's just popular in the West. <laughs> no one has really heard of him in Hong ah, Kong. Yes. Yeah, still, still <laughs> nobody knows him in Hong Kong. Right? Because he remains very low profile. Yeah, he, he's 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 healthy enough. He doesn't need to he, he doesn't need martial. He doesn't need to use his art to to to, to earn money. Mm. He doesn't need to advertise or 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 do, or do things like that. Um, first of all, he's a he's a very traditional Taoist. He's more like a scholar. And. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I must really thank, well, in fact, Liu, Liu, Liu Hongqi for that. I, I'm able to write my book this way is because Liu Hongqi, Mr. Liu, Mr. Bai, and Mr. Yang, they are all very well educated and they're all very uh, practical. Hence, they're able to, to, to teach the art in a very logical manner. They are able to um, explain it and uh, interpret it well to the next generation. And um, why, why Bai Hua is a, uh, he's, he's more like a scholar first. <laughs> and then martial arts is one of the things he, he, he practices. He also practices other thousand arts. But uh, of course, martial arts is uh, very important to him because he, in his language, he said martial arts is the way to attain enlightenment. That's for him. Not, not through other things he, he, he practice. Um, so he's, he's, he's in fact also a licensed um, herbal medicine doctor in Hong Kong, although he never really <laughs> need to use his license. But um, he wouldn't say herbal, Chinese herbal medicine is a way to, to attain enlightenment. So um, he's, he's very traditional and um, 